Yo, what's going on y'all? It's Cone back here again today with another video. And today I want to talk for a little bit about my favorite team, the Oklahoma City Thunder. And I know I've talked about them a lot here on the channel before. And trust me, that's not going anywhere. I'm going to talk about them a lot, especially with the playoffs rolling around. But I felt like this was a good moment to go ahead and take a moment and reflect on everything that's happened this season. There are no games today as I'm uploading this here on Saturday, April 13th, and we're one day away from the end of the NBA regular season, one that has been the most surreal one I've ever had as a Thunder fan. Ever since I started watching the sport, I've been a diehard Thunder fan, and I've said time and time again here on the channel that I think I'm the biggest Thunder fan in the world. I truly believe that. And every moment of this season has been like a dream in a way. It is crazy that the Thunder are where they are at this moment so soon after the rebuild began. And where they are following the events of Friday, April 12th, is that they're in the driver's seat to land the one seed when the season is over. And that didn't seem like the case coming into tonight. The Thunder, Wolves, and Nuggets all had pretty favorable matchups. If the Nuggets won, they pretty much locked up the one seed. If the Timberwolves won, they would stay with the Thunder, assuming they won too because the Wolves have the tiebreaker. It felt like OKC was probably going to land at number three, probably with a matchup with the New Orleans Pelicans or the Phoenix Suns. That's what I'd been thinking for the past few days, but then some chaos unfolded. The Thunder did take care of business. They blew out the Bucks without Giannis or Dame. The Wolves, despite it being a really close game, also took care of business, defeating the Atlanta Hawks. But the Denver Nuggets lost to the San Antonio Spurs, and Wemby went off, biggest reason why they won, but the Nuggets just kind of collapsed down the stretch. Jokic missed a clutch bucket at the end, which you don't typically see from him. In transition, Devontae Graham hit a floater to go ahead and give them the lead with 0.9 seconds left, and then they never even inbounded the ball to try and get a game winner shot because they got a five second violation, I believe still having a timeout. It was a very un-Nuggets-like collapse, but it's one that led to now a three-way tie at the top of the Western Conference, and it's a tie that favors the Thunder, because while the Minnesota Timberwolves have the tiebreaker over the Nuggets and the Thunder, OKC, because of the format of three-way tiebreakers, is at the one seed at the moment. And assuming they win and the Denver Nuggets win to keep it a three-way tie, or at the very least, they end up tying the Thunder at the top because the Thunder of the tiebreaker over them. There's a lot of tiebreakers involved, but basically, barring insane circumstances, there are the most paths to the Thunder ending up as the one seed. And if the likely outcomes happen, they will be the top team in the Western Conference at the end of the regular season and will finish with a ridiculous 57 wins. To put that into some context, that's the third highest win total in Thunder history, only behind the 2013 and 2014 Oklahoma City teams. If I told you that this was going to be the outcome for this Thunder season around the All-Star break or maybe end of January, you would have not been surprised. You would have said, okay, that makes sense. They're playing really well. They've been battling for the one seed all season. Sure, I completely could see that. However, if I told you that this was going to be the outcome again, 57 wins and the one seed in the Western Conference before the season, what would you have said? You would have called me crazy is what you would have said. Not many people were expecting that. Sure, there were some people that were really high on this team, and I thought I was high on this team. I had them as the sixth seed with 46 wins, which was above their projected win total from Vegas of 44 and a half. And still people thought I was crazy for being that high on the Thunder. You can go back and take a look at my preseason predictions video where I had the Thunder as the sixth seed. People were mad at me. They said that I was biased. I was being a homer, that to put them over this team and that team, I was letting my bias kind of blind me and that I was insane for even considering that. Instead, the Thunder not only blew away everybody's expectations, but they blew mine away. And again, I am a diehard Thunder fan. I am biased. I'll admit it. I love this team and I really believed in them this season, but they've still surpassed anything that I thought they could do. A lot of people coming into the season thought that there was way too much hype around the Thunder, that there was no way they would live up to it, that they were going to disappoint. People were mad that Shea was being ranked in top 10s, that Chet Holmgren was being picked by some to win Rookie of the Year, and people thought that he was just going to be injury-prone his rookie season, get dominated by every big, that Jada wasn't going to be great, that he was overhyped after his first season. This Thunder team was looked at as being overhyped as a media darling. Some people said that they were an industry plant, and they've just defied all expectations, even the ones of, again, the most diehard fans. By almost all measures, this team was not supposed to be here, at least not this quick. If you told me that this happened next season or the year after that, I wouldn't have been surprised whatsoever. That timeline makes a lot of sense, but this season, 
sure, I thought they'd be great in that they could win a playoff series, go on a bit of a run if they really put things together, but being at the top of the Western Conference felt kind of crazy even consider, mainly because the Western Conference is completely stacked, and we've seen that this entire season, but even going into the year, we knew it was going to be a bloodbath between the Denver Nuggets, the Suns now with Bradley Beal in town, the Lakers coming off a Western Conference Finals appearance and seemingly having a good offseason, the Clippers who were rumored to get James Harden and then did get him, the Mavericks with new talent around Luka and Kyrie, the Pelicans if they could get healthy, Sacramento was a three seed last year, the Warriors picked up Chris Paul felt like they might be a little bit better, and even teams further down like the Rockets, they improved quite a bit. Utah was always a little bit sneaky before all the things caught up to Memphis. They seemed like they could eventually be scary. Who knew what Wemby was going to do to the Spurs? Every team in the Western Conference felt like it could be at least a little bit competitive until eventually you get to the end of the season and teams tank. But this is truly one of the best Wests I've ever seen. And the team standing at the top of the mountain at the end of the regular season standings may be this OKC squad, which happens to also be the youngest team in NBA history to win 55 games. That's crazy. They have an average age of 23.9. For reference, I turned 24 on May 15th. This team's average age is almost younger than me. In fact, it's right about how old I am at the moment. That's insane to me, both because now I feel old, but because they are out there playing against 10-year vets, these squads with all these proven championship-level players, teams that were handcrafted through blockbuster deals to try and win championships, and yet it's the young upstart Thunder who are out there barking in post-game interviews that are at the top of the Western Conference. That's ridiculous. And again, something that not a lot of people expected, even the people that thought, oh, the Thunder could be a dark horse squad to make a run for home court advantage, probably weren't expecting a near 60 win season from the squad. And not to mention, they got here in record time. They've made a 15 plus win improvement both of the past two seasons. That's insane. And the rebuild has not been going for that long. They were in the playoffs in the 2020 bubble with Chris Paul and all those guys, Shea, Dennis Schroeder, Steven Adams, Daniel Gallinari, that team. They traded everybody that offseason. They went into their first tanking year, although they were in the playing picture before they traded like Al Horford or shut down Al Horford that was traded George Hill, but that was a tanking season then the year after. Then last year, they were one win away from making the playoffs and now they're near 60 win team at the top of the West. It doesn't make any sense how quickly they got here and it's been done by a lot of guys who, again, were doubted. Shea has a lot of haters being called a free throw merchant, people that thought he couldn't be a number one option on a top level team. Here he is again going to finish top five in MVP voting, and if he didn't get injured for a little bit, may have won the award outright. You talk about Chet Holmgren, who is about to play all 82 games of the season after being called injury prone. J-Dub, who took a leap. Lou Dort, who was undrafted and people called the worst offensive player in the league, is now a 40% three-point shooter and one of the highest level defenders in the entire sport. Guys off the bench like Isaiah Joe, who was cut by the Sixers and has now become a sniper for us. Cason Wallace, who some people called a bad pick for the Thunder after the draft because they didn't need another guard and now he's one of the most efficient and best defending rookies in the class. You've got Cameron Williams, who was seen as kind of a throw in with the Steven Adams trade. You have Aaron Wiggins, who is the 55th overall pick in the draft and is now looking like maybe our best bench player. Jay Will, who was also a second round pick and people wrote him off and now he's producing at a high level. Uh, Gordon Hayward has come over here, been a really nice veteran for the squad. And the list goes on and on deeper down the bench. Mark Dagnall is a coach that a lot of people outside the Thunder organization and Thunder fandom were saying, who is that? to when he got hired. Like people thought it was a bit of a weird hire that the Thunder were making a mistake. And now he's about to win coach of the year at every turn. This team has had a lot of doubters and still they continue to push and deliver relentlessly. And the craziest part is that this is really just the beginning. They're super young. This is their first year being back at the playoffs. And also that's crazy. The first year being back in the playoffs are potentially the one seed insane stuff. You talk about the average age of this team, how the guys are going to get better and better. It's only Chet's rookie season, Jadab's second year. They're going to exponentially rise over the next couple of seasons. This year, they're going to get some playoff experience under their belt. They've still got so many draft picks and assets to upgrade the team. Sam Presti is one of the best GMs in the business. Even this year, the Houston Rockets are going to give them a lottery pick and they're at the top of the Western Conference. There's still so many ways to make this team better and improve depending on what happens in the playoffs and what weaknesses we see. It's really hard hard for me to wrap my head around that the Thunder, my favorite team, are in this position. And along the way, there have been so many insane moments, whether it's Chet hitting that shot to send it to overtime, the turnaround one against Golden State, Shea hitting the game winner against the Denver Nuggets. Even the second game of the season, they had a 10-point deficit against the Cavs with two minutes to go, came back, won that game. They've beaten great teams all over the place, the win against the Celtics. 
another overtime win against the Golden State Warriors where we had the new Mon Me Pizza Rolls meme. There's just been so many legendary moments this season, stuff that has truly announced the Thunder as back. They've arrived. When the Thunder were going through the rebuild, somebody asked Sam Presti about, you know, are you going to try and skip steps? Are you going to make these trades to make the team better now or kind of just play it slow? And Sam Presti said, when we get back to the playoffs, we don't want it to be an appearance. We want it to be an arrival. And if this isn't an arrival, I don't know what is. And of course, going to the playoffs, there are still people doubting them, saying that they don't have the experience to take down a top squad to make a deep run, that they're going to get upset, that they're going to get humbled, that they're frauds, this and that, that their top players are going to get exposed. It's a lot. People have thrown a lot of stuff at the Thunder. I would know. I see it in my comments every single time I tweet about the team. I tweet about their success and half the comments are, cool, but you're still going to get destroyed in the playoffs. And all I'm going to say is, they continue to prove people wrong. Doubt the Thunder at your own risk. I believe in this team. I think they're going to do great stuff. And even if it really doesn't go their way in these playoffs, there's still so many years ahead for this team, so many ways they can improve. And again, this is only the beginning. As crazy as year has been, there is only room to grow from here. Up to this point, this has been my favorite Thunder season of all time. My favorite Thunder team ever. They're back. They have gone from the rebuild to a new era where it feels like the future is unbelievably bright. Maybe the brightest future in the entire NBA, at least up there in the conversation with some of the top teams. It's been a joy to watch. I've had a lot of fun. I've had a few of you reach out and say that you become a fan of the Thunder over the past few years from watching my content or looking at my tweets. And I really appreciate all the support. I've just really enjoyed covering the Thunder over the past few years. I'm going to continue to enjoy it. And I'm really excited to see what they can do in the playoffs. They're, I think, going to prove a lot of people wrong. For the moment, though, I appreciate you watching. Leave a like and subscribe if you enjoyed. Let me know down below what your expectations were for the Thunder coming into the season. Did you see any of this insanity coming, or were you someone that was a little bit hesitant, doubting them a little bit? What do you think about the team now? What are you anticipating going to the playoffs? Are you not a believer? Are you a believer like I am? I'd love to know your thoughts. Um, yeah, just great time to be a Thunder fan. Super excited for this team's future. It's crazy that the Thunder are where they are. They really were not supposed to be here this soon, but as they have done for the past few years, they've defied the odds. So shout out to the team, shout out to all the guys. And yeah, I appreciate y'all watching. I'll see y'all later. Real one, say it back.